I mean, remember I've been investing since 2009, you know, yeah. and, and I was bad at real estate in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, started getting better. 2016 yeah. actually re regressed a little bit because I overhired people. Uh -huh. And when you overhire and you don't, you don't screen them and you don't train them and you don't measure them properly. Yeah. And all of a sudden you got liabilities, not assets on your mm. team, you know? Mm. And I had to actually uh, fired my entire team. Well, mo most of it um, twice in 2016. Wow. So regressed quite a bit. And then 2017, finally learned from my mistakes mm. and uh, hired the right people, screened them properly, trained them properly, and then measured their performance properly in 2017, mm. 2018, 2019. So a lot of my growth happened in 2017 to today. Um, but I had to lay a foundation of about eight years of entrepreneurship right. before I, again, it, it was flatlined until mm. it all of a sudden went like that. So mm. um, yeah, it, it takes, takes a decade to become an overnight success. You know, like yeah. that's, that's yeah. the reality of the situation. So um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, just get your house in order, right? Like like figure out what do you want to do and make a commitment to it first. Mm -hmm. So you're not going anywhere for five years. If you're going to invest in real estate, I'm going to dedicate X number of hours a day to real estate for the next five years. And I'm not going to jump ship no matter how hard or difficult or what happens in the market or anything else, mm -hmm. you know, uh, draw a line in the sand and then go start doing some deals, right? Mm -hmm. Take, take down an apartment building or take down a rental property, a duplex, a quadplex, a single family, and just, just keep on buying. You know, you're going to learn more from doing a deal than you ever will from reading about it in a book or right. taking a course. Yeah. And then once you take down that first deal, you know, th there are ways to build up a team before you take on employees. Like you could have fractional employees, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, like you can hire a, a CPA or a bookkeeper mm -hmm. to come in one time every month and just, you know, balance out the books where you don't have to do that. You pay them for three hours of their time instead of full time, you know, mm -hmm. um, that same thing's available, uh, to, you know, you work with a realtor instead of having in-house acquisitions team, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things like that where you can kind of, kind of use contracted work before you mm -hmm. ever bring things in house. And vendor services. Yeah. yeah. Or absolutely. you joint venture, right? I, I don't really like partnerships, like mm -hmm. getting married over all of your business, mm -hmm. uh, but I do like joint ventures, meaning uh, I was in a partnership, right? And we had exclusive agreement to only do deals with each other. We could never do deals with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And that ended up going south because it just sounds bad, right? It sounds like yeah. they can't do anything outside of me. I can't do anything outside of them. And if life happens, then all of a sudden, you know, uh, personalities clash and uh, mm -hmm. we had to liquidate 140 mm -hmm. doors that I built up uh, mm -hmm. from 2012 to 2016. Wow. Yeah. And so I liquidate them all. And I had pressed the reset button in 2015, 2016 again. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my point being is like, if you joint venture though, on a deal by deal basis, you can mm -hmm. partner up with an A player and say, Hey, listen, I'm really good at the sales side and the raising mm -hmm. money. You're really good at operations. How about, you know, we work together and we come up with some sort of equity split on mm -hmm. the operations of this deal. And let's take down one deal mm -hmm. and you open up an LLC and you can carve up the equity any way that you want. Mm -hmm. You don't you hire an attorney and, and they can do it for a thousand dollars. Take title of the property in that LLC. And then you see how it's, what it's like to partner with that person, right? You know, see what it's like working mm -hmm. with that person when yeah. times are good, when times are bad, mm. go through that cycle and then go do another deal and then another one and then another one. And then eventually mm. once you've been through enough deals and you're like, you know what, let's just keep on doing deals together. It's like you're with them because you love them, not because you're contractually obligated to them across mm -hmm. your entire portfolio. Right. Yeah. So you can keep on doing more deals with them if you like it. And if you don't, Hey, great. Cause you only own two deals with them and you don't have to work with them on any other project. Right. Right. And once they exit it, they exit it. Um, yeah. And then what are some hiring golden rules that you can kind of share with our listeners so that they can shave off maybe like uh, three, five years uh, yeah. of, uh, you know, resetting? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I've alluded to this a couple of times. One is you got to screen people, mm -hmm. right? Early on, I was king of the dipshits, right? Anybody who raised their hand, any of my buddies, who raised their hand. I was like, Hey, I, I'm looking to hire somebody. They raised their hand because they had less going on than I, what I had going on. Yeah. And I hired people, I hired downward, you know, yeah. Yeah. And because of that, guess what? You know, all of a sudden your business starts going downward. Right. Um, when I started hiring people who were as good or better than what I could do, that's mm -hmm. all of a sudden when my business started uh, on a positive trajectory. So you yeah. got to screen 
your, your employees, mm -hmm. right? So put it out there. You don't have to screen them. Somebody else could do that. You can hire, mm -hmm. there's, there's HR companies and um, headhunters out there who can help you, you know, find somebody for whatever role that you're looking to fill mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go that route or, yep. you know, you could do it yourself if you want and you're limited on resources, but, yeah. you know, have them do something, have them, Hey, thanks for inquiring. Send me over your resume and list three things of why you'd be right for this job and mm -hmm. uh, two references. Yeah. And see who responds. Chances right. are 20% of the people are even going to do and follow directions. If they can't follow simple directions like that, <laughs> no, there's no way they're going to be able to work for you uh, and right. execute to the level that you want. Right. So yeah. number one would be like screening them. Mm -hmm. Number two was something I was horrible at was once they're hired, I'd be like, all right, go. And just assume that everybody else had the same I don't know, resourcefulness or knew what they were doing. And, and right. like, I never trained anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you got to train people and it's not that complicated. Have them shadow you. Mm -hmm. Right. And watch you do it. Mm -hmm. And then you shadow them, watch them do it. Yeah. And then they can go and do it on their own. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, if you're on a computer, it's very easy to just kind of create a loom video mm -hmm. of just recording yourself going through the process and then you can give them that recording and once you do that once you can hire anybody and mm -hmm. give them the same recording and now you're starting to create a vault of processes and procedures of how you run your business mm -hmm. uh, but you got to train people you can't expect somebody to come in and just know everything that you know mm -hmm. and you've been you know i was in the business for six seven years before i ever hired anybody yeah and i just expected them to know what i know on day one that's yeah. like, it's not realistic yeah. Um, and then the third thing is once they're screened, once they're trained, you have to continue measuring their performance, right? Mm -hmm. What you cannot measure, you cannot manage. So there yeah. needs to be some sort of metric in place that, that measures their performance. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit harder to do on less quantifiable jobs, mm -hmm. uh, like a, like an executive assistant, right? That's a little bit tougher to, to measure that. Yeah. Um, unless you got them in charge of like your, I don't know, scheduling appointments or doing some marketing type efforts or mm. doing some sort of, uh, you know, clearing out your inbox, your email, like zero inbox. That's easy. You know. So, so yeah. things like that you can measure. You can also, it's easily easy measure um, like salespeople, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, how many offers did you put in this yeah. week? Yeah. Uh, your job is to put in 50 offers every single week. Yeah. How many did you get? Oh, I hit 42. All right. Well, you're not hitting your metrics. Right. What are we going to do next week? All right. I'm going to hit 50 next week. 53. Great. You hit your, you hit your goal. Right. But if without, a, without something to aim for, <clears throat> yeah. um, they don't know what they need to be doing. You know? right. And it keeps them focused on the revenue generating activities, coming full mm -hmm. circle to what we talked about earlier. Keeps yeah. them focused on the things that actually make money that you want them focused on. Right. And, um, and if you can keep them inside the lines and focused on, because there's always noise. There's always mm -hmm. stuff, you know, filler, things that can take you away. If you have them obsessing over just two or three metrics, yeah. the only things that are, that are quantifiable and uh, move the needle on that job, mm -hmm. your, your company will grow substantially. Yeah.